Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Higher Line Podcast, brought to you as always by Gunfighter Gun Oil. Keeping your tools wet. Hey, we got a cool guest for you today, uh, Mr. Hollis Gracie. For those of you that don't speak Portuguese, it's not Rollis, it's Hollis. Yes. I, I saw a whole comedy skit where there was like um, white Americans making fun of dudes that are like jujitsu groupies mm -hmm. and they were mispronouncing all of your family's names yes it was kind of funny it's very common yeah yes. and I, <laughs> you can tell when somebody does that that they haven't watched enough youtube videos no they haven't they need to watch a little bit more so thank you for coming my pleasure uh third generation gracie your grandfather was carlos yes is that how you say it carlos or is it you got it is right it, is it harlos no oh, carlos okay, you carlos. got it right for those of you that are listening don't get upset i'm just joking so you have a gym in old bridge new jersey correct hollis gracie academy yes and you for years worked with your cousin henzo yes i still do i okay. still teach in one of his places you still in go a, in new york right in uh new jersey new he jersey has a, yeah a couple okay. branches so not renzo but henzo henzo so just real quick in portuguese r is h h basically right. why don't you guys just make it an h I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> but it, that's where it gets tricky because the R in the middle of the word, like Carlos, mm -hmm. we roll it. We roll the R. Do it. Yeah. Carlos. 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 But it also depends where you're from, right? Brazil is such a big country. Okay. You have so many different accents there. So just like here, you go to yeah. New, New Jazzy yep. versus New Jersey, New Jersey if yep. you pronounce Cup it. Cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you came to America when you were how old? Uh, two end of 2003. How old was I? Uh, 25. Okay. So you're a young man. You wanted yeah. to create a new life. Yeah, I wanted to explore the, you know, at the time my cousin Hansel and uh, other cousins as well, they were fighting Pride, mm -hmm. right? Pride, uh, Pride FC in Japan was the biggest anime event and uh, it was my dream tell that to fun. the folks listening that because there's a lot of people that don't remember the early days of mma that was some hardcore shit yeah you know pride uh i mean ufc you know it got they got it started like back in 93 i think mm -hmm. pride came a little later but the ufc wasn't the ufc you know it was it was like a in the beginning it was a big shock of all reality it was a reality check you know because like uh my cousin Hoyce introduced pretty much Jiu Jitsu to the world. Mm -hmm. And then after like uh, some MMA events started to happen in Japan as well, um, like Valley to the Open, you know, and then eventually uh, Pride came into the scene. And I feel that it took like the MMA scene, at least I was living in Brazil back then by storm. Like everybody, every fighter wanted to fight in Pride, they had, like mega productions. Uh, it was just such an amazing event, and I wanted to fight there. And Hanzo, Daniel, Hyan, and a bunch of Rodrigo, uh, all of the guys were fighting in Pride. And I wanted to, man, that's, I need to be around those guys mm -hmm. if I want to fight there. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? No, I no. did not because I ended up not fighting Pride because the UFC bought Pride. Okay. And they, yeah, they shut her down. They shut good, it down. It was and I was. That. Probably like the biggest uh, disappointment for me when the night, uh, the time, the day that UFC bought Pride, because I knew like they were going to close around. They were going to kill it and uh, and end up not fighting there. You did end up fighting in the UFC and yes. a bunch of, and you've got some titles. I fought a lot, fought all over the world. Yeah. You, you know. fought an ADCC too, too. I fought ADCC. I fought like, you know, if, styles of fighting i fought jiu-jitsu with gi no gi adcc uh competing in judo as well freestyle wrestling, wrestling mm -hmm. pro wrestling like pro know. wrestling like i'm gonna tear your head off yeah, like that like that really yeah really i did it all man i just didn't do uh of course mma you all. you did like the i don't want to say pretend but like the theater entertainment yeah okay all right <laughs> all right what was your what was your shtick in that or were you just like a brazilian no it was just a uh, me just you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy. But you, know. you weren't allowed to use Jiu-Jitsu. 
No, it was like, you know, more jiu-jitsu based in my fights, for sure. You know, okay. using use the, with the use of, you know, jiu-jitsu. Where was this at? This was in like, uh, for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. It's like the biggest uh, pro wrestling organization. Now, wait a minute. In, in America, pro wrestling is like what you see on TV, like like The Rock Johnson. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, they call okay. it, yeah. Here, okay. like more, okay. like WWE. Okay, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it used to be WWF F. when we were kids. Yeah, yeah. now they became like, World Wrestling Entertainment. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, when I was younger, I was I always thought like I watched it, but when I realized it wasn't real, mm -hmm. it was staged. I was like, ah man, how, how come fighters do that? You know, to me, I was like, how come you like you throw a, a fight like that and you pretend you're fighting, then you throw a fight? Because to me, that was like no, because it's fun, you know. But then I realized, you know, like as I grew up more. I was like, man, this is just entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. And the world, be, and the, the name became like, enter, you know, World Wrestling Entertainment. Everybody knows it's entertainment. It's not like a real fight. So I said, why not? Somebody asked me to do like a movie or a play. So you did it. So I did it. So you worked in New York for a long time. You still yeah. helped train with Henzo's Academy, and then you recently moved and started your own gig a few years ago yeah. in Jersey. Yes. Um, yeah, I opened a... I've been teaching with with Hanzo for since two thousand and four. Okay. Uh, and then he opened a, an academy in a, in Homedale, New Jersey. I moved to to run the place, um, and I've been involved with the academy like for since then. I don't know how many years now. Easily maybe ten, almost ten years. Mm -hmm. you know, easily ten years, ten eleven years, and uh, and now we moved the. Uh, a few years ago, the academy moved to a different location. I was called Hansel Gracie Middletown, martial arts. Um, but yeah, but I'm still involved. And do I have you, my own place too. Do you ever get tired of people asking you like about family lineage or like, what's it like to be a, a Gracie? Like, do you ever get tired of that? No, kind of I stuff? don't. I, you know, I think it's part of my life. I think I, I actually think it's cool because yeah. people are, show interest, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it'll be worse if nobody asks me anything. Mm -hmm. I just leave the guy. Just leave him there. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I'm. No, I don't. I don't get tired. Okay. Talk a little bit about your dad. Tell tell people about your dad because it's like there's so many different influential figures and people say your pop was one of the greatest that ever. Yeah. Ever fought, ever lived, ever trained. Yeah, of course I'm biased to say you know, yeah. but uh, to me my my father was uh, was uh, the best. Um, I'm gonna take. My grandfather and my great uncle, uh, Elio Carlos and Elio, are going to leave these guys out of the equation. They are the founders, you know, mm -hmm. they are, without them, you know, without my grandfather who taught Elio, you know, the, who helped uh, pave the road. Uh, so these guys are like the, mm -hmm. they're the gods, you know, but my father's definitely, to, to me, was the best. Not, I didn't get to see. Right when my father passed away, I was I wasn't even four years old. I was almost four, but for uh, what like everybody in his generation talked about him, mm -hmm. talk about him, uh, and they say he was a, he was like light years ahead of everybody in his generation. What do you think that was? I mean, they were all getting the same training from your grandfather and uncles and and great uncles. Like what? Um, what do you think he did differently? I think his mindset was uh, uh, the most important thing, you know, that made him the way he he was. He always wanted some, always looking for some challenge, hmm. right? He was a natural born competitor. He wanted to compete. He wanted to challenge himself, perfect, get better. So I think that made him the way he was, you know. And at the time, there wasn't many jiu-jitsu tournaments then. Mm -hmm. Right, so maybe what, like a couple of tournaments throughout the year, two, three tournaments, and he wanted to compete more, so he started to, where else can I compete? Mm -hmm. you know, what's similar to Jiu-Jitsu? Okay, Judo, let's compete in Judo. So he would, would he train in the Judo, or would he just go and roll in a Judo tournament? No, he would, uh, you know, I, and I feel that uh, some people say, of course, you know, I was too young, I don't, I don't know better, but, uh, I don't know, but uh, as per what I can, uh, people telling me, some people have this uh, uh, um, conception that uh, uh, 
that he was a cross training and then he started to compete. Okay. I think it was more, he wanted to compete. So he started to learn the rules of the, those other tournaments, like a judo tournament, sambo, wrestling. And uh, so he started training more so he can get more familiarized. I, with, see. Uh, I see. So like there's like a, a iconic picture of him and Hickson just with like gi tops and uh, uh, practicing sambo. Okay. Under the watchful eyes of uh, my great uncle, uh, Elio. Okay. You know, so they're actually like trying to figure out stuff too. That's you know? cool. So that like, you know, of course he was always, and he became like, you know, started working out more, lifting and all that. So his dream was to fight in the Olympics, right? So. How old was he when he passed? He was uh, 30, 32, 30, 32, 33 years old. 33, That's... yeah. So you, you've outlived your father by a decade. Yeah. And now he liked to seek adventure. He passed away in a hang gliding yeah. incident. You like skydiving. I skydive. <laughs> you've, you've jumped 750 times or something like yeah. that. So it's in your blood. For my, not for, my mother hates it. <laughs> <laughs> Does she? Uh, mom, I'm kidding. I just, I only skydive a couple of times, you know, maybe five, 10 times, not that much. So do you, do you? So you don't you don't send her pictures of you uh, flying and out of airplanes? No, she hates it. Yeah, uh, I could imagine that. I could imagine that. It makes it makes sense. Yeah. So you got brothers and sisters? I have two brothers, Igor and Gregor. Okay. Yeah. And they do jujitsu too. Two, both black belts. Mm -hmm. Amazing, you know, fighters and teachers as Are well. They big dudes like you? No, there's they're more like about one eighty five. You know, because you're walking around like 250 and you're six foot four. Yeah, 245 is. Was your pop big? No, he was more. So just for the record, 250, 245, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a meal. Like, <laughs> it's a meal. Depend, depending <laughs> on the time of the day, right? Um, yeah, it's not because I'm dropping weight, you know. So that's why I want to make sure mm -hmm. I get I squeeze those. I got gotcha. you. Five pounds in there. Was your pop dick? Was he big? Was he tall? No, he was more about my brother's size, my brother Igor's size. Uh, you know, maybe one seventy, mm -hmm. about five eleven. Okay, something like that. Your family has gotten so huge. I was talking with you last night. I don't know all the family tree and stuff. You meet people that like geek out on studying your family's history. Your grandfather had 21 kids? 21 kids. And then did his brothers have a bunch of kids too? Yeah, his uh, brother Elio had uh, 11 kids, if I'm not mistaken. So you, did you tell me how many grandkids that your grandfather had? Did you know? <sighs> Hundreds? I probably have 100 cousins. Do you have 100 yeah. cousins? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so you don't even know them all? I don't even know them all, for sure. Okay, so there's some of them like you could meet, run into on the street and not even know they're your cousin. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy. The burden of, I guess burden maybe is a bad word. Is there pressure to carry the family name with your academy? I mean, you've got, there's always going to be somebody that's pushing the envelope to be better. Is that, is that get heavy? No, I mean, I hold myself to high standards, mm -hmm. right? I like uh, anything I do, I like to do it well. Right? I'm, I, I can't remember um, going to a tournament, a competition, just to, oh, let me just see how I'll, I'll do it, you know? I'm not in great shape, I'm not that, but let me just see how we'll do it. So I always, every time, you know, I didn't win them all, but every time I went to compete, I was, you know, proper train, you know, trained proper, um, or at least I thought I was, you know, but uh, I hold myself to high standards, you know, on teaching, on everything, so, and uh I feel that, you know, my, the previous generations did great. You know, they paved a great way, and I got to keep that mm -hmm. paving the way for the generations to come as well. So the people that come to your academy, you're holding them to high standards yes. as well. Yes. Not just, you know, just pay a monthly fee and no. show up once in a while and get belts. No, no. no. I, uh, I'm very, you know, about belts, you know, like I don't, I don't handle them out easy for sure. Okay. Um, my belts didn't come easy. No. So, um, I, yeah. Besides the self-protection or competition side of jujitsu, what'd you learn from it? What's like lessons? We talked about this a little bit with my wife last night. Mm -hmm. What are things you said, 
you actually brought up last night, you always thought that the lesson was something different than what you now think it is. Like yeah. The culmination. Yeah, when people ask me, like, because it's only who trains kind of knows the, the bond we develop, right, uh, uh, on a Jiu-Jitsu Academy. And uh, I always, people ask me, like, oh, what do you think? Why do you think, like, it, this bond is developed? And to me, I was like, oh, yeah, because you're so close, you know, like, you're so close together, sharing sweat, you know, and all that, sometimes blood, you know. So I thought it was that, you know, because it gets so, you know, you get close really quick, right? So you're you were you were thinking that just this that close proximity to other exactly. humans, you know, you like be, you developed. There's a bond. no buffering zone, right? Yeah. We're trying to get rid of the buffering zone, like you know, like here we're talking, you know, we meet somebody. You have like a couple, you know. It would be two, very three, weird three. for this to yeah, sit so and talk yeah, like yeah, this, we're but like, if we were, but if we go out to the mat, it would be totally normal for us to yeah. be chest to chest. Sure, sure. So you know, I thought that okay, like so we. You, we breached that gap like right away, so you know what? Like, maybe that's that. But then, not too long ago, I was like, "It's not that." You know, almost like I had like a little bit of a, a epiphany. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, I was teaching when that happened, because I was showing uh, I was showing a escape from a, a back attack, you know, like a strangle. And I think I said, like, you know, this is important for you to know this because your life depends on this. And all my students are looking at me, what do you mean my life depends on that? You know, I was like, yeah, your life depends on it. What if this guy in the back decide, doesn't decide to, you tap, he doesn't decide to let go? Right? Your life depends on that. You better know how to escape. Mm -hmm. So then, like, it, right away, it clicked. Man, what makes people tight in jiu-jitsu, like, get born together is trust. Mm-hmm. Right? I trust that if I tap, the guy's gonna let go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like to me that was a man, trust. Right? And I think the trust is the is the number one thing in any relationship. Mm -hmm. Right? If you don't trust, you know, some uh, a coworker, it's not gonna be good. You don't trust your loved one, you don't trust how you're gonna mm -hmm. have a relationship with somebody you don't trust. And so this relationship that you're talking about is completely predicated on that, like exactly. 100%. Because if there's some jag off in the gym that you don't trust, you don't roll with them, you don't train with them. Exactly. Yeah, you kind of like, you stay over there, I'll go over here, don't touch yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, it's I don't tr it's like the trust in this case, I feel that's like, I don't trust him because he doesn't know better yet. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, it, but if I feel that, you know, a guy that you tap and he doesn't let go, he shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Right, you mm -hmm. should be doing. You brought up else. a good point about your life depends on this. How about how far people? I can only speak for um, the little bit I know, but it seems like people have gotten far away from the self-defense aspect of what your grandfather and uncle started, and turned it more into a um, not broadly, but you see it done where it's just more of a sport. Mm -hmm. And while you could say, oh, that sport will protect you, it's um, people forget like, hey, this person could punch me. This person could elbow me. This yeah. person could kick me. This I can't just stand there because in reality, you could kick me in the face or yes. choke me to death if I don't know how to get out. You see videos, last point, yeah. of people bar fights or something and the guy starts tapping and it's like he's not letting go because it isn't a match. You're, you yeah. got in a fight with a real person. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, for sure. I mean, I don't want to be the guy who says like, "Oh, guys only who does who do sports jujitsu they don't know the self defense." I still believe only if your focus is like on sports jujitsu, you're still going to be better off than the, no, uh, somebody that does not train. Sure. Right. Uh, regardless, you know, like you would know how to handle a, a human body, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you still like I feel that uh, not in a bad way. But I feel that when you start uh, focusing on competitions like a jiu-jitsu sports competitions, you want to get proficient in that, right? You want to like your your dreams to be like a world champion in that. So you're probably gonna dedicate all the time that you can to train under those rules, mm -hmm. right? The same way if a jiu-jitsu guy wants to become like a, a MMA fighter, he's probably gonna shift his training more towards uh, jiu-jitsu, more geared towards MMA. And I think it's also the beauty of the sport, right? Uh, or the art, you can have multiple um, multiple goals, mm -hmm. train for multiple reasons. 
but I feel I the way I see and and I saw that when I was a kid that was like my the way I I grew up looking up to black belts like these guys are untouchable mm -hmm. right? these guys nobody can mess it up with these guys you know they're they're like you know Jedi top, top of the Jedi's like top of the food chain mm -hmm. that's what I go the, the the vision that I had when I was a when I was young. Do you still carry that vision oh, yeah. as an adult? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, um, on my uh, on my academy, uh, on our basic program, I have three different programs there. Uh, levels. Let's. I like to call it program, not necessarily level. Uh, but on the entry entry level program there, um, I I'll teach them how to throw a punch to a clinch, how to block a punch, how to safely get to the clinch, take the, you know, a fight to the ground, how to defuse mm -hmm. a situation and mm -hmm. together with uh, some, definitely with some ground stuff. That's awesome. I built that, I'll build their, their awareness on my, uh, on my students. If you could wave a magic wand, what would you change about jujitsu? Anything? Like globally? Globally? No. Um, Tough to say though. So there's not like something like no, I'm sick of this or, no, 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 nothing that uh, you know. That's good. You know, nothing that bothers me. Like on a, you know, of course, you know, you're gonna have the good professionals and the bad professionals in every area, mm -hmm. right? So I cannot just like, I don't think it's the problem of a, a system, the system or the art itself. Mm -hmm. you, know? you think your grandfather would be proud? I think he would be happy. Yeah, of I what, he what it's all over, become. Yeah, it became a really popular. Yeah. sport you know I, I don't think you can go like anywhere anywhere without seeing you know everywhere you go now there's like a jiu-jitsu place any people in the i'm not going to generalize the world but in u.s you know u.s brazil and i think like jiu-jitsu is on the is reachable to pretty much anybody that's cool you know that's super cool yeah you know i've i think jiu-jitsu within a drive driving distance mm -hmm. to anyone Tell people something about you that they wouldn't know from reading on the internet. What's something that folks don't know about you? Oh well, man, I'm, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, like you got like a weird tattoo or anything? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just wanna, kidding. No, you wanna, do you have? Do you have? I mean, like you know. No, but, but but this is on the internet. They've seen it. You know, I fought mm -hmm. MMA, so they've seen my my tramp stamp. Can I say that? You know, it's not. Of course, be, you can. Is that is that won't be like politically incorrect no. or? Something Drew, like he that. wants to know if that's politically incorrect with the things I say. Um, You're good. Well, like, will people try to cancel me or? <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. You, you know? gotta be, you gotta definitely be concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's always something though. I mean, your your whole. I'm not saying like tell people your deep dark secrets. No, it's uh oh yeah that because that ones I can tell but uh, no no because that's why no I think people get uh, usually people get surprised like um when people meet me my brothers and you know sometimes especially people from other which is a practitioner themselves and they meet us and they're like oh man I thought you guys were assholes you know what I mean they meet us and see like you just normal cool guys mm -hmm. you know so, what do they think you're assholes I don't know man I don't know I think like. I don't know, and, uh, and some people have a look at you, they might look at you and they, uh, um, they, uh, they might have an uh, impression mm -hmm. of you. Like, and that's something like when I was doing the pro wrestling in Japan, one of the guys uh, were telling me like, you don't really pick if you're going to be the good guy or the bad guy. The audience is eventually going to pick that, you know what I mean? Ah. They're going to pick if they like you or not. And then so you it's not like I want to, you know, yeah. fill the role. So you got to fill the role. Interesting. You know, you came to America years ago. You're 25 years old. What's different here versus home? Like, what do you appreciate about being able to raise a family here and operate a business versus in Brazil, which I know is your home, and yeah. your birth, and you love the place. But what what do you appreciate about being here? I um. Now my, my Brazilian friends are gonna be mad at me, but I th I think this is the greatest country in the world. Um, well, why would they be mad? Because you're like, oh, you you traitor, you know, like you know, I have dual citizenship now, you know, and I'm, and I, you know, I just became a American uh, citizen um, last year, you know, I got my American passport. 
Congratulations. Uh, and, yeah, That's thank cool. you. And I think what makes like, you know, uh, people in America, not necessarily because they were born here, but like I think the values they carry, right? You know, because U.S. was founded with, you know, for hardworking people. I think here, when I left Brazil, let me take a step back. When I left Brazil, uh, jiu-jitsu fighters were more, uh, were being perpetrated as like thugs. Hmm. You know what I mean? So like I left Brazil in a time that like people wouldn't value what we do. You know, fast forward uh, a few years where UFC gets po really popular, mm -hmm. UFC goes mainstream, we have like you, uh, Brazilian champions like Jose Aldo, Anderson Silva, you know, all those guys beating a lot of people in the UFC. And now mm -hmm. Brazilian fighters are like, oh, now we mm -hmm. start to give a uh, uh, value you guys but when i left it wasn't like that you know basically like oh you're oh you're oh you're a fighter you're just like a a bum that doesn't want to go to school mm -hmm. you know and i felt that here no people you know would appreciate your art and i uh, here in us i have the stability you know more oh it's a lot of is there any more freedom here more freedom for sure i mean brazil you're pretty free in brazil too um, but I think here you have, you have, a, you have more. You said values. What values exist here that you don't see in other places? You've traveled the whole world. You fought all over the world. I fought all over the world. You know, I don't want to, I feel that like, you know, freedom of spree speech here is like, it's probably the number one thing, hmm. right? There's no other places that constitutionally grant you like freedom of speech. There's no like another constitution that like. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think to me, this is like number one thing. Mm -hmm. So for non-Americans or Americans that don't remember how our constitution was written, it doesn't grant us anything. It just defines it. It defines it. Yeah, because we say, like we, we say it was here before government was. Like we are born with that. So like the go government is just defining it. Or we're saying we're we're gonna define it here, but the government doesn't give us that right. Yeah, you got it at birth. Exactly. Yeah, which is pretty cool. That's the difference between a republic and a democracy, where the mob rule of democracy, like yeah. in many democratic countries, everybody can say, everybody needs to shave their head. Okay, I guess we yeah. all got to shave our head. Yeah. Or everybody needs to get in the cattle cars and go off to the concentration camps. Okay, yeah. I guess we got to do yeah. that. Well, it's not democratic in nature, but. Yeah, people, uh, I think people don't realize how uh, how awesome that is. Oh, yeah, yeah. People, people getting fined or jailed because they said something. Mm -hmm. It's not like... Yeah, that's know, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, not say, I'm not saying, I might not say they're not, that I might agree with what they're saying, right? If they might say the stupidest thing, you know, of course, but it's their right to say. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, oh, where we like where we draw the line, right? Oh, you can say this, but you cannot say that. You know, what I mean, it's not for like somebody to in the government to say that. You know, define what you're supposed to say or not. Like, so say whatever you want. Yeah, you know, I dig it. You've done other podcasts, interviews. Yeah. You've done interviews. I've seen you after fights and things like that. What are things that you would like to talk about that people don't ever talk to you about or ask you about? Are there things like topics you're like, man, why does nobody ever ask me about that? Why does why don't I ever get a chance to talk about that? Man, I feel that I talk so much about everything. Um, I can talk about, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. Honestly, like... Taking it too deep for you? Am no. I taking it too deep? No, you I know, like, I don't mind talking about anything. I can talk, you know. I, I, I feel that usually people want to want to definitely talk more about, you know, want to know more about jiu-jitsu and stuff, you know, things about the family, you know, how I was growing up mm -hmm. in the family that I, that I was born. But, um, yeah, but... What are some things that... that, that the general public doesn't know about the Gracie family. I don't mean like, you know, no. who's got the, the crazy aunt or something like that. <laughs> I mean, like, what are some things that people, like, do you probably hear things and you're like, that's not true, or that's not right, or that's not what happened. You know, are there some mm -hmm. things like that? Man, I, 
probably like a few years ago, I probably had this more like on a, on, my, on the tip of my tongue to say, but uh, I, I'm lately I'm staying away from a drama, drama and forums where people will like, you know, say shit like that in a. I wasn't saying like like crazy stuff like yeah. you know shit talking. I just mean you know there's there's things that get perpetuated and. Well, like we saw something online written about you on Wikipedia that wasn't true. So people yeah. see things and they just assume that it's... Exactly. That yeah. was, you know, and there was a guy in the Wikipedia, he thought he owned my Wikipedia. And I try to fix things there. I don't even remember what I fixed, but the guy kept... I'm going to go back. on there and I'm going to write Hollis Gracie, male dancer. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that on there. I think, isn't that how, isn't that how Wikipedia works though? Can't the public? Yeah. Yeah, you can go on there. So I'm going to... It's gonna, almost like, almost like we talk to each other. I mean, we What fear. would you write on my Wikipedia? If Am I allowed to say on this? On you can this say whatever podcast? you want. What would you write on my Wikipedia? <laughs> You've known me for two days. I, I would say they have some strange uh, uh, <laughs> habits. <laughs> 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 strange habits uh, so a true, guy true. go ahead full, uh, full of strange habits that's, that's not very descriptive i mean that could be that could, that could be biting your nails uh, uh, you know wearing well, dirty a little, socks a little stranger than that so we're out on the range earlier he's going to teach me some jujitsu i was teaching him some gun stuff and I was trying to explain something about his hips. So I grabbed his hips and pulled his hips back while I was behind him. And he was like, whoa! Oh, like, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, pop, pop, pop. Yeah, so he's not down with that. Uh, not comfortable with uh, yeah. the old Uncle Cre Creepo oh, hug yeah. from behind. No, and it's, and it's actually something funny because some uh, uh, Thai Jiu-Jitsu belt like we all tie like this, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I see some uh, some instructors that when they go like award somebody a belt, they cannot tie it from the front, so they go sure. behind somebody. To, and I look at that, I was like, man, that's strange, bro. You I just like, to, yeah, putting a tie on your yeah. son or something. Trying you to, need to learn that, but your son is okay, you know what I mean? But like, it's so you a, gotta practice if you're. You if, gotta you gotta learn how to tie it from the go front. to a heavy bag and work putting it on from yeah. the front. That's funny. Yeah. These are the things that you think about. I wouldn't have any problem with that. I'd tie that belt on from behind, no problem. <laughs> Bite you on the shoulder while I was back there. Oh, it's a joke. See, guy's strange, man. I'm telling you, strange or comfortable. There's 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 one, there's, one, there's one guy on this podcast, just one with a tramp stamp. Okay, uh, man. If that uh, you know, so that's the problem. I think that's attracting you. So that's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's a butterfly with glitter. Somehow he had glitter put into the. I'm just kidding. It's actually it's a good it's a good. It could happen to anybody. Yeah, it could. It could. Uh, hey, you wake up at a party on the beach and yeah. How many times does the tramp stamp come up in podcasts? First time. That's a that's a first. Damn. That's All a right. first. Yeah. I like See, that. If you want something like exclusive. Mm -hmm. You got it. That's exclusive. <laughs> so there's there's literally thousands of Gracie Jiu Jitsu schools. Mm -hmm. Some of them actual Jiu -Jitsu, uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu practitioners. Some of them are offshoots, right? Uh, what do people get at your school or with your methodology that maybe they wouldn't get down the street or across the road or in another school? Man, I think uh, one thing that I could say off the bat would be like, you know, you know, is the guy down the street has the same experience, you know, in fighting mm -hmm. that I did. You mm -hmm. know, maybe he learned jiu-jitsu, he earned a belt from a legit, but does he have the same experience in, in the art of uh, the form of combat sports as I do? So talk about your experience in that, and then we'll go back to what you just said. So, like, how old were you the first time that you had uh, a fight? A street fight? Oh, well, okay, we'll go with that. We'll go with that first. I don't know. I, I was fighting, still, you know, in Brazil, like, you know, you, you grow up fighting in the streets. Why? I don't know. You don't, uh, we don't take shit home, you know, and then you can't fight. I think the law allowed you, at least allowed you back then, you know, like, when you were kids, like, but I mean, it's, it's when you were a kid, like, mm -hmm. you, you fight, you know, you get into an argument with uh, your buddy, you fight it. You know, and it's all good. Mm -hmm. 
an hour later, you know, it's like, like you, I was fighting, you know, with my brothers. Mm -hmm. you know, my brother, Igor, and I used to fight every day, three times a day. And we we're best friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't want to say, like, uh, we used to fight, like, you know, just go around beating people up. Right? Sure. But it was common to, you know, scrap. Did people, your neighborhood did people friends. knowing that you were Gracie, did they, like, push you and challenge you as you got older? Yeah, it happened before. Um... Like, I just want to, like, I want to, you know, I want to test and see if these people are as tough as they think they are. Yeah, when I was a kid, jiu-jitsu wasn't that popular, right? So, uh, people didn't really know about it, you know, what jiu-jitsu was. So, sometimes the friends in the, in the neighborhood, in the, they try to, mm -hmm. you know, test it, you know. So sometimes it's a, another guy instigating, you know, you know, he said, you know, this and that. So, it do happen a lot. But, like, again, like, when you're a kid, how... How bad can, you know, it wasn't like a, being like bullies in time, no, not that type of stuff, you know, but uh, in Brazil it's common, man. Yeah. It's very common too. So when did you start your competition career? How old were you? I, I first competition that I remember, I was a yellow belt, you know, if I'm not mistaken, like seven, eight, mm -hmm. nine, nine years old, uh, started competing then. And competing, you know, competed a lot with uh, with the gi on, uh, for local tournaments, national tournaments, Pan American tournaments, worlds. Uh, did all that. Um, then at some point I started competing, you know, with uh, no gi as well, submission wrestling, um, jiu jitsu no gi. I say submission wrestling because sometimes, uh, you know, pretty much the same thing, but it's still jiu jitsu, but. Uh, just because of rules, mm -hmm. right? Right now, I have like a, like like a, the IBJJF has Jiu-Jitsu gi and no gi, so mm -hmm. pretty much same rules. Um, but then you have some other tournaments that have different rules, and they call it submission wrestling, like ADCC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, done that. Then I did transition to MMA at 27, if I'm not mistaken, 20 something, a little later than I wanted. Um, fought a lot. Fought a 12 times, one most, you know, eight wins, four losses. Uh, then I got back into competing jiu-jitsu again. Did freestyle wrestling, like in like international level. I did like a few. I went to Brazil, competed, because uh, with the Olympics in Brazil, in Rio, I was shooting for, try to see if I could make the Olympic team. Oh, wow. Yeah. So What's was, the... Go ahead. Yeah, so I was dedicating myself a lot to, you know, freestyle wrestling. That's cool. Yeah. What's the number one fight that stands out to you that you lost? That I lost? I out think, of any of them. I think probably my UFC fight. Yeah? You know, there was, there was a big, uh, there was a big uh, lesson for me. Um, I was young. Uh, How old younger. were you, remember? Uh, no, I was... No, young. I mean, young compared to now, but... Uh, not that I consider myself older, I was maybe 29, 20. Okay. That was 2010, 11. Um, no, yeah. I don't even know, man. I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go back to the, Doesn't matter. to Wikipedia. You know? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you know, uh, to, to I printed, out. I printed off everything online about you. Let's see. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, was it Febu February 6th? No, no, it was no. February. It was in February. No, no. Uh, that was against Al Turk, but he had visa troubles. Yeah. So instead, you Joey Beltran? Yes. Okay. So is that it? Feb 6th? Yeah, Feb 6th, 2000, okay. what? Nine? Ten? Ten. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about that. I see what's online, but, you know, so tell me yeah, about. Yeah, so this was like, um, I was 3 and 0. Uh, Signed with, with the UFC. At the time, the UFC didn't have, uh, like, now you see, like, fights almost every weekend, right? Mm -hmm. The UFC. They were, like, once every six months or a year, right? No, a little more, maybe two, three months. Okay. At the time. And I signed with them. My previous fight, if I'm not mistaken, was around September. Uh, I fought 3-0. and um, they, they signed me. And they... A month or so later, they booked me on that uh, on that card. So going in, you know, feeling great, three and zero, you know, I'm gonna take this. Uh, I, 
was very confident on uh, that I was going to do well in the in the division. Mm-hmm. Um, but during the during camp, I had like a foot injury. I injured my foot. I had like I had a couple injuries. I had I injured my rib and I injured my foot. Um, but I kept training around it, trying to do the best I could train with. Uh, at some point, a few of my training staff uh, coaches, you know, my boxing coach Mark Henry, uh, my manager Ali, they were all like worried that I wasn't performing in training the way I. I said, man, I sure you want to fight. Your foot okay? Your foot's not healing. Uh, so they're kind of nervous a little bit. And then when Alturk had visa issues, they called the fight. They called Ali and they called the fight. They say, you know what? Alturk cannot cannot make it. Let's uh, we're scratching the fight. Uh, we book him in a, in, a, in, a, in one of the upcoming cards. So my uh, my manager at the time he said yeah okay no problem he's he's injured anyway he's trying to train to uh, to injure his he's injured anyway and okay and he called me how does a fight is off uh, Alter is not gonna make it this and that mm-hmm. said, what do you mean fight is off but, you know yeah you've been training your that you know I want to fight man put tell them to put somebody else you know tell them to put somebody else and then I feel like you know some of the Again, some of my trainers, they, no, they're not sure, man, you sure? You know, I don't think so, you know? And then Hazel was like, man, let's put, you know, Hazel was like always super confident as well. Like the same beat that I was. No, yeah, let's, and I needed to fight, right? The last time I fought was almost like six months past. I couldn't afford to like wait another three, four, five months because probably like the next card or, or next one or two cards, they were full already. So I had to wait, you know, like I cannot have like a, a year-long mm-hmm. hiatus, mm-hmm. right? And I said, no, tell them to find anybody, man. Put them anybody I, I, I need to fight, you know? And uh, my manager did. Uh, my performance obviously wasn't the way I wanted. Mm-hmm. On the day of the fight, I realized that my stamina and my you know, wasn't there. Yeah, you weren't feeling it. I wasn't feeling, you know, I, because I was, I was like, I was training around an injury, right? I wasn't running, I wasn't pushing the way, I, you know, I was training smart. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't, I, I, I couldn't really step. You know, my foot, I was like flat footed as Damn. hell. Um, you know, and then after the fight, I did a, I went to have my, my foot checked, you know, I had like a, a fracture on my, Right on the, I forgot the name of the bone here on my, on my foot, you know. So you're training all the time with a busted foot. You know, and I, and next, it's funny thing because of my cousin, uh, Heather, she was like, she lives in Las Vegas and she was like doing the training session. She was there hanging out with us. And, uh, I can't remember if after the training session I was icing my foot or mm-hmm. something like that. And she goes like, you have a foot injury, huh? That's why you were so flat footed here, here in the. Hitting the pads. So she picked up one, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That I was uh, flat footed, but you know, living and learn. Right? So, the, so the lesson was you should not have. I, you know, I put. should, you know, I shouldn't take, you know, I, I, cause to me, I was like, man, I'm gonna beat this guy even without a foot. <laughs> you know I'm just gonna mean? crush him. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna get in there, take him down, submit him, you know, like, you know, I don't even need a foot for that. How did he, how did he win? What was the? Was a TKO, you know, I, Dominated the first round, came back, you know, I dominated like a entire, I feel the entire round, uh, took him down. I had an edge on him, even on striking and then and everything, uh, but I completely yes on the second round. Yeah. You know, like, I, yeah. So you ran out of steam because you of were steam. not able to train like you needed to because that yeah. busted foot. Yeah. And then it's funny thing because I never told anybody. You know, at the time, I didn't, I, I, you know, man, the guy won fair and square. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, he won because I was doing that, you know, now, but like 10 years later, 11 years later. Uh, and then, I, uh, the, so that was a funny thing that people were like, you know, like going back to that, people were writing the internet, oh, he had an adrenaline dump, this and that, you know, maybe the, I was like, yeah, what the 
adrenaline dump my ass. <laughs> do you do you get adrenalized when you compete or fight? No, not no, man. I think I'm pretty calm. Yeah. You know, um, I feel that if you do your homework, right, you're you're. I get I get calm, right. Sometimes, of course, when you're getting close, like two three days before the fight, almost like you feel that uh, because I'm not training as hard. You know, just time to like get some recovery time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to cut weight or anything, so I don't need to keep like sweating like crazy. You know, heavyweights have the luxury of that. Uh, even my brothers tell me that uh, hard as you don't know the real taste of water. <laughs> you were never like that dehydrated, that so you like you can appreciate how good yeah. water tastes. You know, after Man, not yeah, having to cut like not that. having to cut weight. So. Um, so yeah, so we, you know, I start to feel like, okay, man, I start to get a little anxious because you're not sweating as much, you know, just waiting around, okay, let's just, can I just fight already? Mm -hmm. So it's that type of like, I'm even, it's not even adrenaline, right? It's just like a little bit like, let's just get over with it. Mm -hmm. It's just, job is done, let me take the test already. Yeah, yeah. You know? How about the number one fight that you won? What's the one that stands out the most to you? The one that you're most proud of or t took away the most from? Man, I feel that like my first fight, I'm proud in a way because I was so confident, was so confident going to that fight. And, uh, and especially if we see like what's my, my MMA debut, and I was fighting uh, a foreign old wrestler, right? That was a guy's resume, you know, like he didn't have a lot of footage on him, mm -hmm. you know, the guy's from Georgia. Um, I think I had one fight, you know, I saw one fight of his. Um, it was my debut. Um, he has like a few, like four wins on a small uh, event. Mm -hmm. And I don't think like I would put a student on mine to, to debut against a foreign old wrestler. Yeah, okay. You know? So, and I didn't care. You know, I got in there, I put all the practice into, uh, into, into, into play, right? And I was here, like if you, when you, of course, you know, when you see the fight and you can hear Hanzo cornering me, it was almost like, it was almost like he was playing like a, a, a a video game, you know, <laughs> pressing the buttons, and I was like, "Do this, do, do this, this, do this." Give me the commands, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. "Boom, boom, 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 boom." And uh, that's funny. Yeah, you know, so that was like, you know, it was a great, it was a great feeling. You know, it was a great feeling of the, of the fight. If you could have fought anybody in history, who would it be? Man, I was close to have a, um, a fight with a uh, Fedor. Oh, cool. Yeah, we almost, uh, but you know, things didn't work out. I think uh, Pedro, Pedro Hughes ended up fighting him. But I almost had a, that would have been like a good one. You know, that would have been like uh, excited because mm -hmm. Fedor was a, a legend, mm -hmm. right? He beat everybody like on Pride Days. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up, uh, I used to see the guy beat everybody up in, on Pride. You know, so that was gonna be, a, it was gonna be really good to fight a legend. Think you'll ever fight again? I mean, I mean, I'm not sure, man. No. I don't, know. I don't think so. Don't need to get kicked in the head anymore. I'm not, a, you know, it's not the fighting, the training, right? Like I said, I, I think my, I, I, I hold myself to high standards. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if my body has 12 brutal weeks. I got you. You know. Getting, well, but, getting tuned back up. Yeah. That makes know. sense. That makes sense. You're into guns a little bit. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> it, you, it's too bad you live in a state that is like uh, one of the worst Pro firearm owner states in the yeah. country. You left New York to go to New Jersey. Yeah. You just needed to go like one more state over to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's better, <laughs> yeah. You got to keep going. Yeah. Um, or keep going south. But actually south, I don't think it's better. No. Maryland. Yeah, Virginia, Maryland's no. no. Virginia is better. Virginia is better, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe like North Carolina. Then it mm -hmm. starts to get mm -hmm. North and South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah, but Jersey's pretty strict. They are. They're pretty strict. Um, Did you grow up shooting guns at all? No, my first time I shot a gun was uh, when I was like 15. When I was with my cousin uh, Caesar in California. Mm -hmm. So we went, uh, we hit a, I don't think California was that bad with guns back then. Too. No, it wasn't. Um, so we had we did a trip to the Death Valley camping in the cool. Death Valley. He brought a, he brought a, a couple of guns with him, you know, uh, a Beretta ninety two. I like it. And a, and a three fifty seven uh, Magnum Smith and Wesson. You guys were just out shooting rocks in the desert. So yeah, I was trying to shoot some uh, paper plates. <laughs> That's fun. You know, put a paper plates on cactuses and stuff like that, uh, which is illegal. Is it? Oh, yeah. I don't know that. In Arizona, if you mess with the big Saguro cactuses. Oh, no, it wasn't like that. It was like more the, more the dry ones, probably like that okay. or something. Hey, cactuses are people too, man. Yeah. Cactus yeah. lives matter. I don't even know if it was cactus. Don't quote Cacti me on that. Cacti lives I just, try, I just wanted to be cool, you know. Yeah, I was, you know, just no, it's okay. Uh, I'm not. I mean, you were a kid. I'm not. Call, you were 15 years old. What's, what's the uh, statue, so, statue so, uh, limitation on that? A side story. <laughs> so, a friend of mine and I, as kids, would go backpacking in the Shwamagon National Forest, mm -hmm. which is like, excuse me, I don't know, 500, 800,000 acres in northern Wisconsin. It's huge. And we'd take a 30 30 rifle and a bolt action 22. Mm -hmm. And we'd, you know, plank and just have fun. And we'd go camping, backpacking for five, 10 days. And I remember one time we sat, there's uh, little tamarack trees, uh, uh, like a pine tree. We sat with the 22, a tree like where Drew is, like 10 feet away, and sitting like this, and I'd load the 10 rounds into that 22, and I was shooting at the base of the tree, uh -huh. and then I'd hand him the gun, and he'd load 10 rounds, and we were trying to see how fast we could shoot trees over. So we sat oh. there. We had bricks. We had These were little trees, you know, like yeah. the base was like that yeah. big. We had bricks of 22. That's yeah. part of the reason my ears are screwed, because we didn't yeah. have hearing protection on, but we'd sit there yeah. and just try to shoot these saplings over, just running through 10 rounds yeah. with the bolt action as fast as you could. Yeah. Yeah, so... You've killed cacti. We killed. Yeah, no, no, I can't remember. They were they were pretty fine afterwards. Yeah, because I, I wasn't a good shot, so I missed them all. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm still not. But uh, you shot good today. Yeah. We were shooting. Uh, we took a Boresight Solutions Glock out there. We had a Langdon 1301 Beretta shotgun. We had the uh, Radian 556 uh, pistol out there. What was that? All we shot? I had my Beretta, but. Hey, you're shooting good. Yeah. You're yeah. shooting and moving, working out of the holster. Yeah. Learning, this, learning a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. good stuff. What are you going to teach me on the mats later? Oh, whatever you're. You gotta, I want to know the dim mock. The what? The dim mock. What's that? You, you got to teach me that because I don't know what's that. The touch of death, man. You never oh, saw blood sport? Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a whole... There's, yeah. there's a... Check this out. Have you ever seen on... Uh, Instagram, the McDojo life. Yes. So we did a podcast with him. Uh, we got to redo it because yeah. the recording got jacked up. But uh, that guy's whole existence is, well, not his whole existence, but the channel is to like share with the world bullshit martial arts. Yeah. There are so many of these schools that teach yeah. people, you know, like yep. and your heart stops and you fall on the ground. It's, it's crazy. And people pay good money like to show up and learn this dumb stuff, like try to grab my hand and you just yeah. like the guy falls over and just stupidity. It's crazy, you know, and I, what I usually tell people, like somebody says, I cannot do this for real, otherwise I'll kill you. So, Get out. So if a person <laughs> trains a martial art, whatever, whatever you want to call it, like it's some psycho striking art, and they say, I can't literally do you, do the real thing to you because it's just yeah. too deadly. Yeah, like because, you know, like jiu-jitsu can do, you can, can pretty much go 100%, yeah. right? Uh, boxing, you could spar, good, mm -hmm. right? Um, why can't you do other, you know, these? Because if I punch you in the dick oh, yeah. or throat, you'll die. You know, so that's uh, and a funny story. When we were at one of the Pride events, uh, my cousin was, I don't know if it was high and that was fighting. We were training at this, at this, uh, at this place. And the old guy who was, who was uh, um, he used to take care of the place there. He called us, guys, I want you guys to look at something, but I'm gonna show you guys because you guys are martial arts, you guys understand. 
this and I want you guys to tell me if this is good or not. So he, he took us to the to a video room upstairs, you know, to a room upstairs, he put a, he put like a, a VHS tape and there was like this uh, Japanese master that the guys who he'll do this with his hands, guys who grab and then he'll go like <laughs> and they go flying. And the guys will go flying. Yeah. You know, he'll go here, next guy. Then the guys will touch his shoulder, he'll go like shrug and boom. And the guys will go <laughs> And we were like, I think somebody in the one of in our group said, guys, don't laugh, don't laugh. Don't laugh in Portuguese. You know, respect the guy, don't laugh. You know, but like it was like and people believe, man. Bring your master to us, let us show you. You know, like people believe and it's crazy. It's yeah, you crazy. see those videos sometimes, like where one of those guys will end up getting on a mat or in a ring with a real fighter. Mm -hmm. There was one, the guy was older, he was probably in his late 50s. I saw the video one time, the, he did all that stuff, like where he'd sit there and like 10 guys would run mm -hmm. at him and he'd go like this and they'd all fall down before they even yeah. touched him. Just total bullshit. So yeah. some young MMA fighter, like literally is bitch slapping him yeah. and knocks him down and he's like, they called it. And then he said later, like his, his, uh, his, like Juju was broken that day. His, he couldn't like harness the chi or something. It's crazy, man. I wonder what these guys tell their students. Like, you know, maybe like, if you feel something, please go with it. Yeah. Because I don't want you to get hurt, you know? Like, don't try to, so it's like, don't hey, go against, people don't followed go against the force. Jim Jones to the jungle and then drank Kool-Aid and killed themselves. So yeah. people will do stupid stuff. People weird. So how does somebody, when they go to a school, what are questions that they should ask the owner? What, should, how, what are things that they should do to find out if they're, you know, training with somebody that knows what they're doing. Because there's people yeah. that teach jujitsu that teach junk. Yeah, there are, for sure. Um, I mean, these days are so, so much easier, right? They have so much access to good information mm -hmm. online. You get good, of, you get access to a lot of junk too, so. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier to, to, to figure out who is who, you know, try to, the, the one thing I would say, like try to see the guy's lineage, you know, who he learned from, you know who is actually his so tell the listeners the viewers what that means because now i in the last year i don't know how many students that i have i've watched get into jujitsu and they'll send me pictures of them like getting stripes yeah. on belts and stuff so there's tons of new people as you know getting into the sport it's exploding still so what yeah. talk about that oh it's like it's something like a, a good example is like how we were talking uh last night you, you, you talk about uh, the dirty dozen right mm -hmm. i didn't know like what the dirty dozen was <laughs> in the jiu-jitsu right so you start giving me some names some names i knew right and some guys i didn't know but i knew who they got the black belts from mm -hmm. so the dirty dozen guys is the first 12 dudes here in the states that got their jujitsu ju black belt and the funny thing is is here this guy he's like i have no idea what this is. he's like what is uh it doesn't it doesn't yeah you know so, so yeah so it's important you know like uh see where they they who they learn from mm -hmm. if the guy has like no oh i i'm uh you go to a place the guy's wearing black belt as he's in his teaching jujitsu who gave him his black belt mm -hmm. Oh no, but he has, but oh no, this guy has a, a taekwondo, a karate or something background, but doesn't really have like formal jujitsu training. Maybe he picked up something online. You know, mm -hmm. that's a huge red, uh, red flag right there. Reading about some of the people last night, we were reading about the Dirty Dozen. I saw that Hoist mm -hmm. came up and took a belt from somebody. Oh, he did? Yeah, I don't remember. There was like a story to it. I didn't, you know. Yeah. I, I didn't like read a bunch about it, but it was like, I wonder what happened there. Yeah. Give me it back. Give me it back, <laughs> man. Give me it back. Is that, does that stuff happen? Um, Would it be like a disgrace thing? Like you did something to, to dishonor the lineage? It could be like to me, like uh, become a black belt. It's not just like uh, about skills. Mm-hmm. Right? To me, like, uh, maybe the guy has the skills of a black belt, but he doesn't carry himself like a black belt. So it could be in that sense. What does that mean? I mean, I want you to, I mean, it's not just for me to hear, but them too. Yeah, like, you know. Do you, have to, do you have to get a tattoo? Yeah, that would be good. On my, on my academy, that would be better. You know, it would be like, it's not a must, <laughs> but, but it would be a bonus, you know. It's, 
Um, so how, how should a black belt level practitioner carry him or herself? I think like the the guy should 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 be an example for people, right? You know, like to the uh, some different places have different uh, uh, ways that they teach. They they like uh, things mm -hmm. around, but definitely like you know, is a guy is respectful towards uh, uh, you know the. Not only the higher rank, but he's, he treats uh, uh, the upcoming people the same way he treats a black belt. You know, mm -hmm. he's a, an asshole to them. He's like, you know, is he a good training partner? Is he uh, an asshole in the street? He's a good, you know, is he has good character, good mm -hmm. morals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are all important. I dig it. Mm. I met you through our friend Todd. Todd. Yeah, Protection for Humanity. Todd's been on the podcast on Instagram. It's tour training. Todd's a friend of Henry Aikens, and I met Todd through my coach, Dan Hart. It's fun, like, the the way the, the web of relationships yeah. work out. How do you know Todd? I know Todd because of uh, Hensel. You mm -hmm. know, he was always uh, around the Hensels, I guess because of he's always on the, on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, every time he was in New York, New Jersey area, he was pop in and uh, and Hansel was do some training. We met him there. Um, funny story, I think he told on your podcast about that he went to do a challenge at, uh, at Hansel's in Homedale. Mm -hmm. So he was on tour with uh, Creed, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Who, <laughs> <laughs> and one of the guys, one of the guys, you know, but yeah, he was like one of those kung fu type of guys. Yeah, he was one of the guys that was on the tour with him. It was like your your yeah. karate's junk, my karate's good. Let's yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, the guy kept saying, you know, and the guy who I don't know who exactly, uh, what if I'm allowed to say, but uh, he was training, getting trained for both of these guys, and the, I think the guy. Start to disrespect Todd and somehow, or you know, say that his stuff wasn't wasn't. He legit. showed me the video of it. Yeah, because the video is still on. There's no audio though. I think there's no audio. It was old. Yeah, it's twenty something years old. I think it's uh, no, it's about ten. It's got to be older than that. No, I think it's ten years old. Okay. Yeah, he beats his ass. It, it was like <laughs> it was like not, it, it was so easy. Yeah, it was so easy. That Hanzo, I was there, right? And Hanzo told him, uh, Todd, don't even strike this guy. What he said, though, he said, no more striking. And the guy's like, but that's what I do. And no, Hanzo, no, no. Hanzo said, strike. yeah, he goes, I'm not talking to you. I'm telling him to quit hitting you. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. so funny. Yeah. So um, it was like a piece of cake. Yeah. He, it basically looked like, and this guy was a high level, um, Chinese martial art, one of the oldest ones in the world. It's called uh, something that sounds like flung poo. You can think about it yourself. I yeah. don't want to say the exact yeah. art, but it sounds like flung poo. Yeah. Um, it looked like a child fighting an adult. Like he was it, just it, like, it was like I, I felt. I felt bad, man. Yeah. I Were you like, there? I was there. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I didn't I know there. that. Yeah, I was there. Um, Were you laughing? I was like, man, I, I don't think I don't even think I laughed. Like I felt really bad. I was like, is this real? Yeah. Why are we is doing this? this? Stop, beat, like, stop beating that kid up. You know. But, and he wasn't a kid. He was a grown man. Yeah. And I was like, man, is this guy a lunatic? You know, what is he, did he really think he could fight? It was What's like weird. Was oh, yeah, and that was that was the insult. He told Todd something to the effect of, like, you're. Your juju or your your martial art is like grade school. Mine yeah. is like college or something like that. Something like, like that. Like yeah. yours is for kids. Mine is like yeah. for like you know high level stuff. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Like, man. Wow. And I thought, man, I was I was excited. I was like, man, we're gonna have one of those old school. Uh, you guys close the drapes. You know, <laughs> gonna have one of those old school challenges. You know, it's gonna be. It's gonna be fun and this and that. Get him a body bag. And I was like, was he? I got out of bed for this. No, was he <laughs> respectful when it was over? I think he, overall he was respectful. I didn't hear him say anything uh, 
bad uh, or anything about it. I can't remember like if he came up with any excuse or, or anything. But I think Todd catching up with Todd later, uh, I think Todd told me that uh, the guy was like still wasn't very cool, you know, said something, you know. That's They're when like, you just oh, like, was because of was because of whatever, you know. Clearly, there are many martial arts where people can learn to protect themselves better than no skill. And the problem yeah. I think people misunderstand. It's not that it's worthless. It's just not as good as like yes. a car from 1930 is better than walking, but it's not yeah. as good as a car from 1980 or a car from 2010. Even if you're just learning like a notion of distance is already good. Yeah. You know, like if you're learning how to walk, if you learn even like, you know, it's already better than our nothing. friend Bryce Frank talks about a lot of um, uh, Eastern striking styles like Taekwondo where the hands turned, because mm -hmm. he's a national level champ Muay Thai guy, he talks about like that one movement, that's mm -hmm. great, learning to turn your hand over because it extends yeah. your reach farther. But it's like, well, that's just like one little, <laughs> one little yeah. thing there. Exactly. Not, not the, the whole totality of it. People get, people get pissed. I think my friend uh, Aaron Cooper, he's uh, often brings up the point of, uh, having a partner that allows you to do things to mm -hmm. them. I'm not going to stand here and like, let you like, you know, po poke yeah. me and karate chop me. And that, it, that, like you said, boxing, like even in boxing, I'm going to cover my head. I'm going to move. I'm going to mm -hmm. punch you back. But in a lot of those styles for real, I'd hit you, but right now I'll stop right here. Yeah. So I, you never yeah. really get and be to be careful with the energy that I'm going to develop. So if you feel stuff, you move back, you roll back. <laughs> Cause otherwise just the energy alone could like cause you like some internal damage in the long run. So go back, roll back if you can. <laughs> What's strange is, uh, simple physics. I can't walk onto a football field and be like, I can stand here in front of these linemen and just, you know, like, yeah, it's, he's heavy. He's running at me. I'm gonna get knocked down. But people still think that it looks cool. Yeah, no. the old movies. And it's crazy, man. Even in jujitsu now, I see some people demonstrate some stuff like on a internet, Instagram, you know, all the. And I, sometimes I look and I feel like commenting. What if the guy's alive? <laughs> people bring up Bruce Lee all the time, and. It, I think, and I'm not a historian of Bruce's life, but people are like, no greater martial artist that ever lived. And it's like, well, I mean, you can't really say that. In the time of the samurai, things were different, or yeah. there were um, Native Americans that were just brutal mm -hmm. that the way that they fought. Yeah. But what do you think, him today going in the UFC? Oh, um, man, uh, it's, I mean, he has a, you know, I, I, I don't want to take anything away from Bruce Lee, because I think he's probably one of the most famous martial artists ever, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, like the young kids, I asked, my son is uh, 12, and I asked him if he knows who Bruce Lee is, he doesn't know who doesn't Bruce Lee know. is. Doesn't know. But like, you know, any, anybody in our generation knows yeah. who Bruce Lee is. So like, you know, that's, he did something, but like when it comes to like UFC real fighting, I don't think. Uh, no contest. Yeah, I, don't, I think so. There was no opponents then that he could have trained against that that were yeah. at that level. And I'm not aware if he actually, you know, I'm not a historian. I didn't ever study his history in that. Uh, but I don't know if he ever did any MM, you know, no holds barred type of Well, people fights. say he's the father of MMA. Some people say like he's that his stuff was the first because he studied boxing, fencing, dancing. He studied jujitsu yeah. and judo and different types of grappling arts and things of that nature. But um, Chuck Norris said that because uh, he knew Chuck Norris obviously mm -hmm. knew him. Student uh, of. And he was Chuck Norris, a black belt in jujitsu. Now he learned from uh, the Machados. He learned from my cousin's uncles. Uh, and he said he wouldn't stand a chance. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I mean, I yeah. I would I just asked you just because it's fun to talk about, but I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, so he either. said he was like, no, he, was a, he wouldn't last long with any of the skinny graces. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the interesting thing that I think the general public doesn't understand. Like, it's such a refined, raw. Uh, uh, 
style MMA, like call it a style versus like wrestling or, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something else like, like Western boxing. It's how do I strike really efficiently against somebody that's trying to hurt me? How do I st stop them when they get in close to me? Or how do I take them to the ground and break their arms and neck? Mm -hmm. Like that's, pretty legit i don't yeah. know like where do you go from there like what's next do we start putting like swords coming out of our elbows or something <laughs> like how do you how do you make it uh or how do you refine that anymore yeah good question I mean, and is it and are we doing things that like the greeks didn't do or the romans or the mongols or i mean is there is there there's only so many ways you can move a human body around yeah, I mean, I think like because because back then they could rely more on uh, weapons too, right? So it's bludgeons and you know bludgeons, you know, like and stuff like swords that. Swords, and swords, bows, and bows, and daggers, and nunchucks. You know, they had no problem like using that in a in a fight, you know. And it was, it was so maybe they didn't spend too much time on a mm -hmm. on a hand to hand combat. Right. If you could get awesome at one weapon, what would it be? Not a gun. Not a gun? <sighs> Size? Bow staff? Uh, I'd like to say an axe. An axe? Yeah? yeah. I, I don't like know. a big axe? A little axe? No, an axe you could carry on your back? A double blader? Maybe a double blader. Not super big. Something uh -huh. that I could swing. Are we talking like... Like Viking stuff? Are we talking like like no. uh, uh, like end of the world? Uh, Mad Max? I think end Walking of the world, Mad Dead. Max. Yeah, I think the more on that stuff. Yeah, I could kind of see you with like a bandana on your head. No, not a bandana, but yeah, just like a <laughs> <laughs> just a an axe. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, you I like to see a sword. You know, I my sword would be like, oh, you know, but let's. An axe is cooler. An, an axe it's a little cool. more. It's a little more yeah. uh, uh, like tough and gruff. The think, sword is too so. refined. I think so. Yeah. yeah I, I like a sword. Sword's pretty cool. So, or I think so. You know, swords are. But like swords are so many. We like then we have to be more specific. Which sword? I like hammers. Hammers. Are, yeah. Yeah. I like a hammer. Yeah. How about just an axe handle? Uh, F some shit up. Just an yeah. axe handle, man. An oh, ash yeah. axe handle. Yeah. There was a uh, a sheriff called uh oh what the heck was his name buford what the heck was his name buford pusser mm -hmm. he was a he was a uh a sheriff in i think it was adams county tennessee there was a movie made about him called walking tall it was remade with oh the, yeah, with the yeah. rock yeah. the original movies from the 70s he was uh -huh. a, did you ever see that movie yeah. the original one he uh he busted up i mean in a way he was the hero, but now as I'm older, it's kind of annoying. He went and busted up moonshine stills, mm -hmm. but he'd take an axe handle out of the back of his squad car and just break all the moonshine equipment yeah. and then beat the hell out of the guys with the yeah. axe handle. Yeah, they say uh, Musashi used to f people up with his, like, you know, a wooden sword, right? Mm hmm. He mm -hmm. got so good, so proficient that he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. you're an axe guy? I think it'll be an axe. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool to have something interesting too that's like out of the ordinary yeah. like what are you gonna do with that and then like maybe like a big wooden spoon like my mother could wield a wooden <laughs> oh, spoon. The, oh yeah yeah like just a big one like that, it'd, be, it'd be kind of yeah. that might diffuse a situation too like if some guy's trying to be aggressive and you pull the a big wooden yeah. spoon out of your briefcase be like what yeah. the f are you gonna do with that how about the axe <laughs> with a detachable quick detachable uh uh handle Here's a, I'll just go. Okay. <laughs> Here's a conversation you yeah. never thought you were going to have. You're like, I no, traveled across the country for this. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I like axes. All sure. right, we're going to get, I've got a double bit axe in the garage. This was nice. called a double bit axe. We're going to do some axe throwing into one of the neighbor's trees nice. after he goes to work tonight. Nice. Let's do it. It's a joke. We're not throwing yeah. out the neighbor's tree. Well, but if, if the podcast is only after, you know, we can do it. Nice. We can throw some, throw some, <laughs> throw some stuff. No. What's next for you? You got the school. Got the school. You got a family. Uh, I got a family. You got a young child that you just got, had. Uh, yeah. So coming up on a year. Coming up on a year. A couple a little older. Yeah, three to uh, four total now. Um, you got a 19 year old. I have a t uh, 20. 20. year old. A 12. A soon 10. And, and now a, almost you know, a year. I'm all, almost a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are any of them doing jujitsu? 
my son, you know, he was training a little bit. I show him some stuff. You know, he lives with his mother in uh, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to, you know, get him uh, up to speed with stuff. Does he like it? He likes it. Yeah. You know, every every time he's with he's with me. When he came to uh, when he comes to spend like a you know summer vacation, you know, or you know Christmas break, I take him to the academy. He does some class. My 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 daughter too, Gigi, uh, the little one, and my daughter, my older daughter. Now she's getting starting to get into jiu jitsu more. Hmm. You know, after you know, I just sent her a gi like uh, last year. It's awesome. Yeah, not you, actually like this year. You started as a little kid. How old were you when you got your black belt? I got my black belt. I was uh, tw uh, 20. It was in 2001. So 24. Going so, to almost 24. So you, how many years? No, 23. So you, so 23. So you were really training like over 10 years as an adult, not as an adult, but like as a thinking, rational person Yeah. before you... Got that far. I mean, I'm not not that not that a child's not rational, but a six or five year old's definitely not learning the same. Yeah, it's just doing what your parents year. tell you, right? Yeah, you go, yeah. I gotta go to do this because my mom told me. And now you're a four stripe black belt. Fourth, yeah. Fourth. Fourth. What's the correct way to describe that? What? The stripes on your belt. A stripe. But uh, yeah, you said fourth, so it's fourth degree. Fourth degree. Why are you I being? Guess, why but... are you trying to be aggressive with me when I'm trying to yeah, interview man, you? I don't know. Okay. Oh, there's a mat right there, man. You know, <laughs> as long as you keep the guns in the closet, you know. Can we uh, get the axe <laughs> and the wooden spoon? <laughs> okay, I'll give you the axe. So <laughs> the you get your black belt. Yeah. Then three years later, you get one stripe. Yeah. Five so the, years. The, the first three stripes uh, is like three, three, and three. So nine years. Nine years. So you can get your uh, your third stripe, right? So five years for the fourth. And then five years five more for the fifth. So to get four, you've got at least 14 years yes. of being a black belt. Yeah. Which is longer than most people train to get a black belt. Mm -hmm. And then it's five years. For the fifth as well. So you're like there. I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, uh, I didn't put on my belt yet, but I'm due. And how many stripes can you put on a belt? Till, uh, till it's time for another belt? I think it was on the seventh stripe it, be, it changes to like a coral belt the red and black that's cool yeah do you wash your belt i don't no no it's bad juju right i, I mean i never did um never your belt's never been washed it's it, it if it was washed a couple of times by accident so it's a petri dish yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's... I don't feel... I mean... Where'd that people, start? Where did it start? Yeah, the um, not washing. I mean, is it like because it makes it stiff? Is it because, like some people say, it'll wash the... The nose is away? Yeah, of course yeah. not, right? Yeah. But uh, I feel that... Uh, and who knows, right? Things that happened way back, you know, who knows if how legit was that, how true was that? But there's like... They say back then everybody was used to wear like... Uh, I'm talking about like way, way back in back in Japan days, right? Guys would wear would have only like a white belt, right? And the toughest guy in the room was probably the guy with the dirtiest belt. Right? So that's how you kind of like differentiate, you know, who's been putting more hours, more time into mm, it. So I need to take my belt and just tie it to the tractor and just yeah. like drag it around the yard, yeah. bury it for a little bit. But it's very common too that people now in a, even in a one of those more traditional martial arts. They wash their, their belt so much that their belt's like falling apart, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I didn't grow up with, you know, washing the belt. Um, I don't usually do. My belts don't stink. Um, so I think it's, I usually hang them. They're always like breathing, mm -hmm. getting some sunlight, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Usually bacteria doesn't like that, fresh air. Bacteria doesn't like uh, fresh air. And, I'm just uh, playing with you, but it's, stuff, <laughs> it's stuff like, that, but people, you know, people, uh, yeah. uh, I hear some guys that are like, yeah, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I wash my belt. And other guys are like, you, you wash that, you're... No, I mean, uh, this is, you wash if you want, you don't want to wash. Uh, and it's, sometimes when I give a belt away, 
you know, of course, like belts only have like a few sizes, right? Some people might be a little too, you give them one size a little too big, you give them this next size down a little too, too small. And I say, you know what, take the bigger one, wash it, it will shrink, and then it's going to be mm -hmm. probably going to be on a mm -hmm. better fit for you. So Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. If the people listening never got to meet you, mm -hmm. never saw you online again, what would you tell them? What would you leave them with? What would you pass on? If today was the last thing you ever told the world on record, what would it be? Shit, that's heavy. That's heavy, man. I'll just say like lead by example, man. Don't do it to others what you don't want, to, don't want it to be done to you. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. What example would you set? What example have you set? Um, I walk the walk that I talk. You know, I'm not. I'm gonna keep digging. What do you talk? I mean, I. Uh, I mean, I respect. You know, I'm a pretty respectful guy. Mm -hmm. You are. I've spent some time with you the last you know, couple I'm days. Not a, I know I'm not an asshole. You know, I respect. Uh, I I would treat. Uh, you wanted my wife to sit in the front seat. You wanted to get in the back, even though you're yeah. nine feet tall. Yeah. Um, I don't, I wouldn't treat, you know, the, let's say, you know, the garbage man different than I would treat, you know, the mayor of the town. So you're not a respecter of persons. You know, I, I feel that if you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole, depending where you, depends where you come from, you know, what you do. And, you know, that's my take on that. I like it. Yeah. How do people find you online? Uh, Instagram, Rollis. <laughs> <laughs> Rollies. Rollies Gracie. R O L L E S. Gracie. G R A C I E. On Instagram. At, yeah, at on Instagram. And then. Um, Twitter, same thing, same handle. Uh, I'm not where, there as much. The, on Twitter. Twitter, okay. I'm not there as much. Um, Facebook, I don't. Not a Facebook guy? Not anymore. People in Jersey area can find your gym online? You got a yes. website? RollisGracieAcademy.com I mean, we could just, we could correct <laughs> this by telling people that it's Holes, Holes. Man, I just... Uh, can you tell them how you, what you named your son? Uh, Hollis, I H O L L I S, which is exactly how your name is pronounced. pronounced. But you spelled out, so you named him after yeah. you phonetically, yeah. but you spelled it like. Yeah, because every time I used to call like, the credit card company, the bank, or cable company, anything like you know, oh, who I'm speaking to said Hollis, and what's the relationship with Rollis? <laughs> you know, like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so now if they just call like a who, he's my brother who, who I'm speaking to I'm like Rollis oh okay so now I, I, I saved my son the trouble that's you funny know? that's funny because middle name could have been uh, R sounds like H could have been Rollis middle name R sounds like H Gracie you're not following me no but, yeah I'll have to write it out for you yeah probably yeah. when you see it his middle name would have never mind I'm off it so, Hollis Gracie on Instagram and Twitter. Yep. Uh, the Academy's web address again? R O L L E S Gracie Academy.com. Cool. You guys sell some uh, uh, sweat cards and geese and things like that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, like, I'm, I'm just putting, uh, I'm just launching soon uh, uh, a virtual uh, um, academy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Talk about that a little bit. You know, I'm uh, putting up. Uh, it's already on for my students, so my basic program, my entry level program, is already there. The one I talked about, I teach you know, like uh, how to clinch and all, this, all the stuff. Uh, it's there, uh, so I'm opening up for the for the general public. So Shortly. they will pay uh, like a monthly fee, a monthly or, fee, okay. a monthly subscription, and then yeah. your your new subject matters on there, and they can yeah, go on. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm putting all the the programs exactly the way I teach in my academy. Uh, and they also they're gonna be able to uh, have with COVID and everything like I put cameras f I, for 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 Zoom classes, mm -hmm. so they'll be able to with the subscription they'll be able to actually not only see the the techniques but watch a live class as well. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out, my man. man. My pleasure. You, thank you. You guys uh, that watched or listened, thank you so very much. Tell Drew behind the cameras and the editing desk, thank you. If you dug it, share it. 
If you guys have not checked out the classes that we do, please do, carrytrainer.com. Hope to see you out there. And don't be dickheads. That's it. Don't be dickheads. Don't be dickheads. Or else? While we're still recording, everybody that comes here, sir, signs that, uh, yeah. that you can throw that chair out of your way if you want. You're a big, strong man. Oh, you can sign whatever you want. Throw, the date, over throw, the, throw the date on there. Today is the 16th of... Maybe they'll get a glimpse off of the tramp stamp. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go here. Rallis. So this is interesting. He is a right-handed shooter, right-handed thrower, mm -hmm. but he writes lefty. Isn't that weird? That's not for, it. For yeah. what? For, for uh, 16. 16. 21. 4, 16, 21. Visit our website, carrytrainer.com, for information about classes held throughout the U.S., Carry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at carrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement. Training at carrytrainer.com or carrytrainer.com. doing in the podcast room steve i'm writing a national anthem it's going to be at folk festivals for gunfighter gun oil oh. let me tell you about gunfighter gun heart It wasn't even Bob Dylan. It was like a, it was like a love story. <laughs> <laughs>